actually the rear end or anus of the bug. And this is a structure, it's sort of like a hinged here, like a pen knife. And if you look at the legs, you notice some of them have these microscopic pegs. But if you look at the front leg, you notice that these pegs are now formed into a comb. So when the dead bug is alive, it actually uses that to clean the antenna off and clean the mouth parts off. Because most people think because these are bugs without mouth parts like cockroaches, they don't clean themselves. But actually they do. And that actually, by knowing that these do clean, and uh, to get a lethal dosage of a pesticide, if you had them on a surface where they had to keep clean themselves, they'd be standing on the pesticide longer, and it gives them a chance to pick it up. Anyway, here's a life cycle view. Just showing that they start as eggs. There's a first instar nymph, which is very pale. There's no food in it. And you notice the second, third, fourth, and fifth, uh, without being recently fed, you see the dark material inside, that's the blood that's being digested. Their body's sort of amber colored or straw colored. And then when an unfed adult is flat and rounder, and then when it's fed, it's elongate. It has special um, membranes in its body, and also there's a section under its belly that's all soft membrane, so it allows it to really swell up a lot, feed, and then go off and digest the food. Uh, another shot showing uh, by the same person, just got better pictures. You'll notice in the eyes, you can see through the eggs when they're ready to hatch, too. Uh, this whole life cycle may take about eight weeks, let's say, in this area. It would take maybe four weeks if these were all raised at 90-some degrees. But usually in the 70s, it's probably down to about eight weeks. And all uh, in stages, which is one through five, and the adult stage, they all have to have at least one blood meal. Uh, well, the nymphs preceding the adult all have to have at least one blood meal to have enough energy to get to the next stage. They shed their skin when they're um, going to the next stage. And that's also one of the things you have to look for are shed skins. The adult will feed, uh, mate, uh, feed and mate. So they're able to do this through their many months of a life cycle. So, if you look at the reading here, it says takes a blood meal, then molts. Takes a blood meal, then molts. That, that's not actually true, because there, otherwise our whole life cycle might take a, a two days, if you think about it. But, in reality, it's taking a blood meal, but then it has to digest that food. It molts, and then it goes to the next stage of the belt. Uh, this is just showing, you know, some uh, fed limbs and some unfed there's just different life cycles out there if you go online. And you'll see this one, which is actually a pretty poor representation because they all aren't red-brown when they're born. And this would actually give you the wrong idea of what bed bugs look like. And here is an infestation. This is just a lot of dead bed bugs with a live, fully plump nymph here. And here you see there's a lot of eggs laid on it. Because they don't have to lay their eggs in cracks and crevices if they're living with a lot of dead, other dead bed bugs, they can lay eggs right on the dead bed bugs too. And here, this shows the, uh, the belly view. So you see this is a hunger fold area. You see this is a shed skin. You see this is a young nymph. Here is a, a, a red colored nymph. They're not all, so you see there's a lot of coloration differences in all bed bugs' life stages. This looks like a bunch of cornflakes. <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a few adult bed bugs, but this is just a jar I poured out of shed skins and bed bugs. And in some cases, I've seen this occurring under a bed. You know, because there were thousands, and like half a million bed bugs in the home. And there were just layers of shed skins. This is going on for years at a time. This is a jar of bed bugs. I took the cover off, and you just see all the bed bugs sitting around. I was breathing here, so they were up from the bottom of the jar, and they were up picking up my carbon dioxide and seeing who's producing all this carbon dioxide, because that's over evolutionary time, they're attracted to CO2 and they're attracted to heat. Uh, another 